uh, Mrs. Director General, Mrs. Regional Director, Ministers, Heads of Delegations, Representatives of uh, NGOs, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first say um, how glad we are, Mark Pearson, Head of the Health Division of OECD and myself, to be here, to uh, be at your meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, um, five years after the economic crisis first struck, we are today, 2012, still, really still on the edge of a precipice in Europe in this zone. Unemployment in Europe is uh, over 10%. And youth unemployment is double, triple, even five times the average. And long-term unemployment has taken root even amongst younger people. And we make some progress, although some little progress, in solving the banking and sovereign debt crisis. And whatever the solutions are, it is very clear that Europe cannot expect to be rescued economically by the rest of the world. Each other region than Europe facing its own problems. The United States of America heading towards a fiscal cliff that risks derailing the economy. China and India, the world's engines of growth in the past decade, have slowed. And Brazil today is flat. And economic growth in Europe might struggle above 10, about 1% in 2012. And we cannot expect much better than that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the real background to your discussions this week on how to improve health systems. As indeed, it is to all the work we do also at the OCD on the health system performance. For most countries in the European region, the chances of significant increases in health spending in the next five years are very low. For some, the picture is even worse, is even bleaker. Further cuts in spending will be inevitable with all the pain and hardship that this brings. So it is clear, we all together must deliver greater value for money in health spending. Of course, this is always desirable. This is desirable whatever the state of the economy, but it is so much more important when money is tight. And let's be clear, all countries, all countries can do better in getting value for money. I would ask you, does anyone here in this meeting room seriously denies that health systems are not riddled with inefficiency? Spending too much on some things and too little on others and badly on many. Our work at OECD shows that countries differ enormously, differ enormously in how well they spend whatever money they can afford. Some countries get far more health for their money than others. Alas, colleagues, alas, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, far easier to say that, and I quote, we need more value for money than it is actually to deliver such results. We indeed, we all know how hard it is to design health policies that are politically feasible and yet which don't have unintended side effects. This I hope you agree, is where international organizations such as the OECD and the WHO can help, can really help and make the difference. We do not presume, let's put it clear, we do not presume to tell you what to do in your member state, in your state, in your country. But I think we can play a big role in helping you, in helping you to identify where your system is underperforming compared to others. We can provide examples of good practice to inspire changes in your own systems. It is in that spirit that I, Mrs. Regional Director, that I welcome the signing today of our so-called Joint Action Plan, identifying the areas in which OECD and WHO European region will effectively cooperate in the next few years. Let it be clear, OECD and WHO, we are not the same. My organization, the OECD, is primarily an economic organization. And it was not an accident that I started today by describing the economic situation that we face here in this region. We all are specialists in the economics of health. And we are interested in the allocation of health resources, in improving the efficiency and improving the productivity of the health workforce. 
in providing appropriate incentives so that payment systems reflect the real cost of resources and promote, do promote greater efficiency, and so on. We at OECD really in no way presume to have the depth of medical knowledge and indeed understanding of how health is generated on the ground than does the WHO. Ladies and gentlemen, the guiding principle of the joint action plan between OECD and WHO of the joint action plan that we will sign today is that by working together, we can be more persuasive than if we act separately. And there are many areas mentioned in the plan illustrating that cooperation is already tied. Among them, let me highlight three areas where I think that the work we've been done doing together is of particular importance. First area, stressing to the public, to the public in general and to the government, stressing the role, the positive role, also from an economic point of view of public health. Ladies and gentlemen, European countries still spend only around 3% of their health budgets on prevention. Despite only 3%, despite all the evidence that such spending provides better value for money than much spending on secondary or tertiary care. WHO European region has a proud tradition of emphasizing the value of public health spending, shown not least by the prominence given to the issue in the so-called Tallinn Charter. We at uh, OECD from our side have been working hard to make the economic case for investment in prevention, the positive economic consequence of investment in prevention. We published our reports, for instance, on obesity and the economics of prevention, fit not fat, two years ago. And we are currently preparing a similar analysis of what works in tackling harmful use of alcohol. So the combination of our number crunching technical analysis to give evidence that will understand the scrutiny of the most skeptical controller of public budgets on the one hand, and on the other hand, WHO's European understanding of how prevention fits into the wider health system and how it can be delivered in practice is, I think, I really think, potentially very, very powerful. And I hope further work together in this area will be convincing. Second area, where there is a positive outcome, I think, of the joint declaration, joint plan, joint action plan, fiscal sustainability of health spending. I draw your attention to our joint network on the fiscal sustainability of health spending. That network we set up brings together the Ministry of Finance, official responsible for health budgets in every country, together with their Ministry of Health colleagues to discuss issues of common interest and, of course, at the forefront, the sustainable financing of healthcare. In some of your countries, relations between ministries of finance and ministries of health are already very close and what I would call cordial. In many, however, sadly, they are not. Indeed, officials do not always appreciate the objectives and constraints of each other. They even don't always know them. And we hope that this dialogue between people from the Ministry of Finance and Budgets on the one hand and the people of the Ministry of Health will improve this point. For example, crucial questions like how rapidly will health spending grow in the future? Or is it possible to create additional fiscal space to allow for health spending? Or what might be the effects of changing the way in which we finance health spending? Or Last example, how should we budget health spending? What are the advantages and disadvantages of hard budget constraints? WHO region, European region, and the OECD co-hosted a regional event of this network in Estonia very recently. Which, this event, which was by all accounts a very great success. A shared appreciation of the challenges facing health system between ministries of health and ministries of finance is needed now more than ever, and I trust that this collaboration is just the start of our joint work in this area. The third area is credible data collection. Health data is in high demand. There were well over a quarter of a million downloads of health data, for instance, from our OCD website in 2011, and our statistical publications on health regularly topped the OECD so-called bestsellers list. But we are well aware 
of the fact that with the WHO and Eurostat, data users have a choice of three different sources. And we must say that slightly different definitions leading to different figures being reported undermine the confidence in health statistics. Indeed, with three sources of origin, who would the people have to trust? Who should they trust? Different organizations collecting the same data from countries also adds to burden, to the burden of report imposed to the countries. So by working together to collect data jointly, we will deliver a better product at a lower cost for countries. We are therefore delighted with the success of the data collection of non-monetary statistics that we do jointly with WHO Europe and Eurostat, and we are looking forward to extending it in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. I started today with some, well, maybe depressing thoughts about the state of our economies, about the reality of today. At the OECD, we are convinced that the only way to get our economies really back on track is to be quite fundamental, quite radical, and to think of new approaches to economic growth. Approaches that are more sustainable, that are more structural, and that are also more social. Sustainable growth indeed can not be from carbon generating feeding of consumerism. Today, as of today, as you know, even better than I do, health already counts for nearly 10% of GDP. And people are supporting this expenditure. And growth and jobs can be generated from expanding health services. But we can only justify this if health systems deliver real value for money. So I think, Mrs. Regional Director, if we combine an understanding, on the one hand, of the subtleties of healthcare provision that is characteristic to the work of the WHO, on the one hand, with the economic rigor that we apply at the OECD, I think we can make a compelling case for health in general and for appropriate reform of healthcare in particular. That is, anyway, what we hope to, um, to achieve, what we hope to achieve with our joint action plan, and I hope that it will respond to the wishes, to your wishes, to the wishes of our member states. Thank you very much.